let's talk about gaming. And when I talk about gaming, setting up the ultimate gaming experience. I'm not talking about the hardware aspect because most people know I'm pretty cheap. I don't have the latest and greatest in hardware. I usually use budget hardware and I use it for an extended period of time. So with that said, let's talk about the software. I'm talking about Windows. We're talking about Linux gaming. We're talking about all those things because they're just kind of thrown around the community. And I've talked about them extensively in the past. But this video, I wanted to just kind of jam it all into one, give you a broad uh, overview, overview of what's going on, what different setups look like, and then you can choose which one you want to go for. I'll leave links down in the description and also I'll be pointing to the top right corner here a lot. That's just referencing those videos. So if you want to do a deeper dive when I'm scratching the surface here, you can easily go to those videos, see what I'm talking about if you're unsure. And with that, let's get on the desktop and start looking at these different setups. So pull it up. I normally set up the desktop wallpaper and just start stripping out most of Windows. I use this box right here specifically for gaming. I don't browse the web. I don't do any of that other stuff. So a lot of times when you're following my Windows D bloat guides or those types of things, please note, a lot of times I am using it. I want minimal resources. I want maximum performance on Windows and that requires a level of customization. Most comments you'll read on the videos, uh, especially the newer ones will go, hey, this guy is making your windows unsecure or those type of things. Just know I am not browsing. I am not downloading a bunch of executable programs from the web when I'm on my windows. So what does my windows look like? You'll see I have GeForce experience. I have a lot of remote access tools, VNC, Team Viewer, Steam installed, among a lot of other launchers that are currently not on. If you go over to performance, you'll see I'm running about 100 processes. This is about normal for me, fully loaded up. I've had this going for a little over three to four days. Probably time for a reboot in Windows land. You want to reboot probably about once a week. And I have pretty minimal resources. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm rather cheap. I'm using a 2400G CPU. This is a sub $100 CPU, not the greatest. Only 8 gigs of DDR RAM. And as far as the drives themselves, I have a couple solid states, one big hard drive to store those large games that are over 100 gigs. And for the GPU, I'm running a 2060. This is probably a bare bones based mid-grade PC. This means you can play almost any game you want at 1080p. I'm not probably doing any 1440p gaming in this respect because a lot of times I like to stream all my stuff. As you'll probably notice, I'm using 30% of my GPU and you might be wondering about that. I'm not actually on this box right now. Uh, even though I can game on it, it is another PC. I'm actually... Anytime I'm on Windows, I'm not actually sitting in front of a keyboard and mouse for that particular box, which I'll get into in a second. As far as the library con is concerned, we'll pull up uh, our Steam library. You'll notice I have a lot of Windows-only games on here. Destiny 2, 76, uh, RDR2, those types of things that may not play well on Linux platform. All these other games in here, typically I have loaded up. I might load them if I run into problems in Linux, but for the most part, I use this box specifically just for gaming when Linux is either giving me problems or I just want a different experience. Steam out of the way. Let's jump over to GeForce Experience. We'll go home. These are the games I have loaded. You can see like Call of Duty from Blizzard. I have that on here. Apex from EA. Dauntless, that's a uh, Epic Games. You can see I have all those Ubisoft's Division 2. These games are usually easy anti-cheat enabled, don't play on Linux, and I just load up a lot of my games here. So the reason why I have this dedicated box with an NVIDIA card in it is I like to stream to all my other systems. As I said, I'm not actually on this system. Uh, I'm just streaming it to my current PC. I can go inside to my production box, stream it there. I can go lay on my bed and just plug in my little Steam link and play it there. So having this one game box centrally controlled means I can play however I want. Think of a, a console, but you can easily take it anywhere and it doesn't really have any problems. 
this type of thing, I highly recommend doing my deep load script and then also doing security only updates, which I'll leave links in the bottom and, and try and link up top as well to where you could set up your Windows box to do this type of thing. If you're doing this extreme tinkering, just know I've disabled like Windows Defender and those types of things. You may want to leave those in if you're still using it and this is your only PC. So I'm going to just say that right out of the gate. With Windows out of the way, now that you understand the base core gaming system to play 100% of your library, you pretty much have to have Windows. Let's switch over to Linux real fast. So on the Linux box, Steam is king on Linux because everything's native. For the most part, you can just click whatever game you want, hit install and play, and a lot of times it'll work out of the box. If you're unsure if your game will play on Linux, you can just come over to here type protondb.com and from protondb you can just type in whatever game you want so if you want to like, hey where's a uh, diablo 3 on this and since this isn't a steam game it actually doesn't show up i did diablo 3 on purpose because lutris fills in those gaps that aren't steam games as we know diablo 3 is a blizzard game so i can easily launch into lutris and from lutris you'll see some other games in here these Lutris installed games are some stock settings, Diablo 3 and Minecraft. This is actually multi-MC, which is a front end for Minecraft, so you can do different versions. But just know these two are stock install and play from Lutris. Anyone can install these. These two have some special configurations. I'll start with Darksiders because this one is an Epic Games launcher game. I get it free. So I, I, of course, claim that free game, but I don't like Epic Games Launcher and it causes a lot of problems in Linux. So I use something called Legendary Game Launcher. I've made an entire video going over it, showing this entire setup process, but basically you're able to launch your Epic Games without using their launcher. Pretty awesome uh, open source tool. Kick that guy a couple bucks if you really get a lot of use out of this. This other one, you probably noticed Star Wars Galaxy. That's a defunct MMO from probably eight years now or 10 years, something like that. I played it back in the day, but there's a cool little legends. I actually created my own little custom script to launch from Linux. It does wine, Java, and interfaces directly with it using a simple bash script. This launches directly into here. And from SW legends, I can actually launch into this actual EMU server and play old Star Wars galaxies on Linux. Because some people say Linux gaming, you can't do a lot of these mods. It depends on the mod. Nothing's not capable of playing. It's just sometimes easy anti-cheat will kick you out or it'll be extremely difficult to get working. This was more on the difficult side of things. I'm going to just flash up the script real fast on the screen. This is the basic bash script I created. It's just basically setting a couple variables on launch, the actual EFC launcher, launching Java in wine, I know, <laughs> and running this executable legends launcher. This is a proprietary system, but I wanted to just kind of show you what's possible with Linux gaming. Sky is the limit, but it de largely depends on your technical ability. If you're not technically skilled at all, you're going to be pretty much limited to probably about 70% of your library. If you're technically skilled, I would say you can get 90, 95% of your gaming library working, but you might be tinkering around for a couple hours. I love tinkering. And frankly, a lot of my videos is me tinkering, figuring something out as I get more enjoyment out of figuring out how to play something than actually playing the game. So I love these types of things. I've made other videos on actually modding out like Skyrim. So when you see I have Skyrim in here, installing mods for Skyrim is kind of a Kind, kind of a pain in the butt. So I went ahead and made a video on how to launch like Vortex and actually install those mods on a Linux environment. So I wanted to showcase these basic things of setting it up, but there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. So the last thing I wanted to talk about, or actually there's two more things after this one, but VFIO pass-through or PCI pass-through as some call it, these types of things is having two graphics cards, one is dedicated to a virtual machine running Windows, much like our where we started from on the Windows box 
uh, you could actually have a virtual machine dedicated to that. Now, me, I didn't approach this way. I've done videos, an entire playlist, which I'll link up top here, going over PCI pass-through. It requires two different graphics cards, meaning I recommend an AMD graphics card and an NVIDIA graphics card, and then just dedicating one of those to that system. And then from there, you could launch that virtual machine and it takes a hold of that graphics card and you can play whatever game you want. The downside to this is the setup is very, very complex. I've had some success with it. Uh, the first time I set it up using Hikari Knight's GitHub here, this was about a year and a half ago when I made that whole playlist series. It took me about an hour to two hours and it worked fantastic. The second time I tried setting it up, my motherboard was not compatible with it, meaning it wouldn't be able to separate those graphics cards out properly and get their own respective IMM, IM, IOMMU groups. Ah, that's a tongue twister. And I've even you know contacted, I think, Wendell from Level 1 Techs and used some of his scripts to try and separate that out. That specific piece of hardware is just not compatible. So I don't talk about this way very much right now because... It's so difficult for many users and it's just not, I would just get inundated with emails talking about it. So that's why I don't talk about it and it with Luke and Glass. That's okay. The future is coming and I think it's with SRIOV and we briefly touched on that with the 30 series NVIDIA cards. I said, hey, that's pie in the sky is not happening, but I still hold out hope for the future of gaming on Linux with uh, VMs. Because if they do institute this protocol or this technology, I should say, it will allow us to launch VMs and it'll have hardware level access to the graphics card, even though it's already being used in Linux. So you can have it in Linux and Windows, both using one card. That's why everyone's talking about SRIOV. That's why I'm looking forward to AMD's launch and not NVIDIA's launch. And lastly, I wanted to talk about game streaming and I won't stick on this topic long. I did a video specifically over doing NVIDIA game stream or NVIDIA's GeForce Now. This is the best one on the market for game streaming because you have such a huge array or you could even use Shadow. I think Linus Tech Tips got sponsored by them and uh, they, they've done dedicated videos. But cloud gaming is possible as long as you have a really good internet connection. Your internet connection will dictate your performance in here. That's going to be the bottleneck. And if you have crappy internet, forget about this method. But if you do have decent internet, you can get some okay results. Like uh, in that video I showed with GeForce Now, well, I, I played Fortnite and I actually got a kill. And you know, I am terrible at pretty much all battle royales, as pretty much everyone will attest to. So that is gaming, just a, an overview of what I consider the perfect thing. My perfect system right now, what I'm using is two systems. I love my dedicated Windows box where it just does gaming. And then I do all my productivity, all my video production, all that stuff on my Linux box as I'm just more efficient. I love Linux for that. That's why I use it. Some people use it for security and privacy. Me, I just like the speed of it. And that's what I have it set up. Other people like Hikari Knight in the community, he he actually did that whole VFIO and he's been using it for years now. And he loves that method where he just has two GPUs using a really beefy CPU. I think he's using a Threadripper nowadays. So he has a ton of cores. He can carve those up, have half for Linux, half for Windows. And that way he doesn't have two PCs and he's able to do it all just right on his box, which is great. But really, the future of this is kind of hybrid between the two. I could see myself doing that using like an SRIOV type thing on an AMD card. I really think AMD will be the first one to do this. And if they did it in this next generation, it'd be huge. I would literally be the biggest AMD GPU fanboy in the world, probably. I would just run down the streets shame, telling everyone to buy an AMD GPU. Will that happen? Probably not. That's, again, probably not going to happen. But if it did, it would be awesome. And uh, NVIDIA right now, I would imagine, is still going to be the top dog. They have been for many years. I think they'll remain this title. As far as the RDNA release coming up, I just hope that it's a good budget card. Because I love buying it mainly because... Uh, using AMD cards on Linux is so easy because I don't have to download drivers. I can just 
you know, install and play and that's, that's it or plug and play and just go without having to do all that stuff on Linux, which is great. And that's why I just wanted to make this video, just say, Hey, this is where we're at. So when I'm talking about, Hey, Linux gaming, or I'm talking about windows gaming, uh, a lot of times it's all revolved around these realities. This is where we are. I am a gamer. I still love playing games. And if you want to check me out, playing a game and just kind of chill and chat, I still live stream over on Twitch, and if you don't and you just want to talk tech, by all means, catch my Friday stream here on YouTube, as I love doing that as well. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.